What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dustin Apple, and this is White River Rambo Customs. If you follow the hashtag White River Rambo, you know that, well, this little shop creates a lot of content in the outdoor space. I've been in the welding community, the bow fishing community, archery, hunting, saddle hunting, how-to videos all about building outdoor gear, getting you out and inspiring you to chase more critters, teaching you how to weld, and, well, occasionally showing you some new products from the ATA floor to right here in my own shop and the products that I use. Now this, my friends, is the Fox Pro Mud Cutter. Before we get into the ins and outs of the Fox Pro Mud Cutter, I thought I would bring you along and show you the light rail that we're gonna build on this brand new 1972 that I built from scratch. Now I could do a normal little box, but well, that just wouldn't be cool, would it? So we've been up some pans and we're gonna mount our Fox Pros to these, but we've gotta build them. So I thought I'd bring you along on today's video. We'll show you how I build this light rail. We'll show you how I rig and completely set up this system. This is gonna have a two part system, port side and starboard side will allow us to change color, change brightness, turn on and off with the touch of a remote, which is super cool. And before we get into that, let's just get some welding done, get that out of the way, and I'll be right back. All right, next day we've built our light rail and I really like how it turned out. Nice clean corners here. Went and tested our outboard after we got everything wired up and we're good to go. So it's time to go ahead with the install of our mud cutter lights. Now, you can see I've got one box unpackaged and I thought I'd just go ahead and do a quick unboxing of the other box. And once you open the box, you'll notice that each four pack comes with a remote, okay? It comes with four extensions to go in between each set of lights. It comes with DC power to be able to run the 12 volt. And also in the bottom of the box, it comes with drivers that look like this, okay? Which uh, AC plug for each light. That allows you to run DC or AC. These are gonna be a bank fishing light for me because when I do that other type of fishing, I generally use a flashlight. So I'm gonna run these AC on a generator and that's how we're gonna go ahead with this install. It's important to note that these brackets can be placed in either direction depending on your needs, okay? The inside direction this way, the bolts are 21 and 9 16 on center, and if you flare the bracket out, they are 23 inches on center. For my personal use, I'm gonna flare them out because that's gonna make it easier for me to drill the holes from the underneath. So it's important to note the hardware in each package. We'll just go ahead and dump it and take a look at it here. Now, obviously to begin with, each package does have its own Allen, okay? You got the two brackets and I like to mount these a certain way. I said I was gonna flare them out and I like to take this flat spot right here and point it towards the front of the light. So that one's gonna be on that side and this other one will be to the other side. Now, looking through our hardware here, you can see we have, we have two pan head bolts, two large washers, two lock washers, and then two nylon washers. The rest of this will be for these holes and mounting the brackets to the boat. So we're gonna take a pan head, we will put a lock washer on, then a flat washer on, put it through 
our bracket and then put a nylon washer and sandwich that in between the bracket and the light. Look on the back of the package, right here. Come on over, come on over, right there, right there, right there. So you got a couple different illustrations on how to wire this thingamabob. Um, four bar setups and eight bar setups. And each one shows how you can use, you know, the drivers. And then, you know, if you want to use it DC, you pretty much do the same thing and, you know, create a mainline trunk and run it back to your batteries, things of that nature. Um, but the difference between this way and this way is this way is split right and left and that will utilize the full capacity of the remote okay this way is just one main line series all the way around with a controller now for each controller you have will determine what side you have right so if you're only using one controller that does give you a spare controller in case one were to you know ever damage but by using two controllers i now have a port and a starboard side so Basically, you have two cables coming out of each light, right? And let's just let's just go over the boat and I'll explain how that works. So, light bar, light bar, light bar, right? The here is a main line going from the first light bar, okay? This is our networking cable, and then our second light bar, this is our network right here. So, we would use our network cable and our T connector, okay? Make a connection there. And then this drop is going to go here, and then we will take another mainline cable and run it over to this one, all right? Now, the other end of the cable, this is where the power comes from. So on these, the way I've got this light bar set up, I'm going to run my power cable down this pipe into the bottom of the deck. That way I can mount my uh, drivers underneath the boat, and then my network cables, okay? I'll just cram them up behind the light in the light bar, and well, I've already got the starboard side done, so let's take a look. Probably one of the most challenging parts of this build is trying to figure out where to run your controller. Now, since I'm gonna have a port and a starboard side, I decided to run my controllers right here, where it is out of harm's way the most. One of them you tap to turn on and off, and it is brightness, dark to dim, and then the other one is yellow to white, okay? and you can control them independently or from the use of the remote. Now, got my light rail all mounted up and well, I'll just include everyone in this because this is probably the most satisfying thing to do after a hard day's work and completing a project, right? So we'll get all these ripped off here And things look like 100 mile an hour sitting on a trailer, don't they? All I gotta do is get this other side on and we're going fishing. I bumped it down a little bit. I shot. <laughs> No attention to the ball. Everything's under control. I shoot. I shot. No, take him back here and put him in a barrel. Okay. There you go. Go ahead and take him off. Got him, didn't he? Yep. Oh, yeah.
Well, boys and girls, we're actually on the Ohio River tonight. Uh, now, it's the weekend, there's lots of boats out here, and there's been a little bit of bank wash as well as it's been hot, and there's a lot of scum on the water. And we've noticed that having the lights to be able to adjust them from yellow to white is really handy because you may go a quarter mile and, and the water looks fairly clear like it does here. You can see those trees and stumps really well. And then you may roll around the next corner and it be bank wash and be kind of silty. And there's still a few fish sitting in there. With a touch of the remote, I can just bump up the color a little bit or lower the brightness a tear. And uh, hey, it's allowing us to see more fish. Over, over top. As you guys can see, there is a, uh, there's a barge coming around the corner there. And all I gotta do is reach down to hit number one and I'll turn my port side off and, and let that barge cap and uh, not get so upset at bow fishermen and we can still go ahead and fish right on down the bank. Well, night number two didn't quite happen immediately. Had a, a little cold front move in. It just was not gonna be good fishing, but we're, uh, we got the lake all to ourselves on a weeknight and, and we're just kind of going through some gear here. Go ahead and give your practice shot in there and uh, making sure making sure everything's good so we're getting ready to turn the lights on and run back in here and uh, see what's up now we're going to start out with some really clear water then we're going to move to another part of the lake that's typically dirty and see what demands it brings to the mud cutter bow fishing lights So immediately, it's like it's not even dark yet, and we got into the cove and get away from the bank wash where it's a little silty. Um, and I turned this side on where it's got just a little bit of yellow to it, and pan over here, Amy, which absolutely looks pretty good. I can still see bottom over here. And then if you turn over to this side, this is pure white, like whatever the highest Kelvin is, 5,500. 6,000 Kelvin um, really bright white but as we get back in here we'll, we'll be able to, to show the differences a little bit more I get over here next to the bank a little bit more can you see the bank in the video yeah, I can so you can see a big difference in between the two light colors yeah so if you get too yellow you're actually staining up the water with light and if you get too white, the light will actually reflect, refract off of the sediment that is floating in the water, which that's all muddy water is, is dirt particles floating in the water. So when you find the perfect setting, like that's too yellow, dial it back a little bit. That's really good, I like that right there. And then for this water right here, which is still a little haze, I wouldn't say stain, you can absolutely get it a little bit too white. So let's get on it back in the back here where there's some vegetation and uh, things will change once again. Here, here, no out. Got him running here. Good job. There you go. We're not even back here to where it was going to get good and, and, uh, all of a sudden just hit a pocket and there was like what six or eight just kind of mm -hmm, laid together started swimming out kind of odd it's uh july 3rd good stuff Well, the further we get back in here, I really expected it to get clearer, but it's actually getting murkier. And the white lights, for me, just aren't working. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to match this other side about there. And I think that's gonna be the trick for us on this one.
Hey, that's gonna work out pretty good. Well, Amy and I have had a couple days to uh, check out the mud cutter lights and kind of reflect over, um, you know, the setup that we've built. I wanted to bring you in front of the camera because you're a little different than most wives. You've got 20 plus years bow fishing experience, and you've seen all the boats that I've built. We've tested lots of boats. We fished over high pressure sodiums, cool LEDs, warm LEDs, even custom LEDs that we ordered direct from the manufacturer that was kind of kind of the bright yellow color that's on your shirt there. How do you feel like the mud cutter lights being color changing and power changing? How did you feel fishing behind those versus other light setups? I feel like they're very, very versatile, very, very easy or easily changeable based on the conditions of the water, based on how Absolutely. muddy the water is, based on how clear the water is, and with just the touch of the remote or the touch of a dial or the turn of a dial, you know, you're very easily able to know, okay, I can see better with this color of light or this brightness of light and quickly. Yeah. We've never had that, yeah. we on one of our boats have never had that ability to do that before. Yeah, absolutely situational. Yeah. But I thought the remote, like I was going to just love the remote yeah. and it was going to be my best friend all the time. But I'm a hand control trailer guy, okay. so I've never liked the remote for a trolling motor either. True. Now, while I was fishing with the remote, I actually had the remote flung over my That's back okay. to keep it away from while I was fishing. I actually liked the knobs and how I mounted them in the front of the boat. I liked that more than I liked the remote. That second night of fishing, I didn't even get the remote out. No, you didn't. Um, but while we were on the river, I really liked the fact that you could just simply hit a button when you come across something. When that barge come up, I'm, right. I, I always have thought that for years. Man, I need to turn these lights off because that barge is coming up you know, a camper or somebody yeah. fishing on the bank, being able to just touch a button is completely different than anything we've ever had because you're my, my generator yeah, queen, so you right? you run to the back of the boat and unplug the plug-in. Okay, lights are off. Yeah, and then you go 200 yards and you plug them back, back in. Back there, plug them back yeah. in. Yeah, well, don't do that anymore. Right. So, very cool. Um, I absolutely like that aspect. Now, from a builder's standpoint, uh, we did our light rail 14 inches tall. The length of our deck is 80 inches long and 72 inches wide, and I had no problems wiring and mounting this system. Mm -hmm. um, I had plenty of wire. I'll, I'll crawl underneath the front deck and show you guys how I mounted the drivers, but I run the, the power down the, the vertical tubes on our light rail and then mounted the drivers underneath the deck and was able, had plenty of cord, like each one of those either had five or six foot of, of cord, and that was enough to be able to reach a power strip and then run it to the generator. I really like that because I didn't have to wire nothing. I didn't have to get junction boxes and wire nuts or, or worse. Um, the generator's protected by a breaker. The power strip's protected by a breaker, so you got double protection there. It is an awesome system when you look at how everything is uh, plug and play. Um, now, you helped me mount the lights, which was pretty handy Ooh, too. That um, was bad. I like, the, I like the light rail we built because it was really low profile. Right. And that's another thing I like about the lights. We've, We've had, well, the, the last high pressure sodiums I built was like 10 inches by 20 inches. Big it was boxes. big boxes, right? Yeah. And a big light rail, which made a big wind dam on the front of the boat yeah. and made the boat kind of act squirrely over 40 mile an hour. So mm -hmm. the lower profile light rail doesn't affect boat performance. It uh, maximizes visibility while you're driving. Definitely. So all around, all around, I, I really like these lights. Thinking the remote was something that you, I guess, that you didn't think about that you had to do, or that I didn't think yeah. about that you had to do when you when you did that. So I mean, once you were able to read the directions and think it, it wasn't bad, and know that you had to do bank one and then unplug everything and do bank two, and I would equate it to doing the universal remote of your VCR. It was really simple yeah. for that. <laughs> and, and if you run your light system all in one bank and don't have a, a port and starboard, it would have been simple. Yeah. But we were trying to get that port and starboard and didn't realize that we had to unplug half the lights and program that and then plug the other set in and keep that side unplugged while we did bank two. And that's what we kind of, kind of took us a minute to figure out, but man, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't bad at all. Um, I, I absolutely, 
did not know what I was missing by being able to adjust color. And on the Ohio, something I didn't expect, um, I'm thinking LEDs, you're going to run full power all the time, right? But yeah. there was, in looking through that scum in some of that water, I actually liked a little brighter white, but have the power down because the brighter white was reflecting off the scum. But if you turned the power down a little bit, it didn't reflect so bad and you could see through the scum, mm -hmm. which I've never been able to see through anything like that before. So right. that was, that was kind of jaw dropping for me. So, um, Hey, I appreciate Fox pro and mud cutters sending these lights out. Um, you guys have done nothing but support me and AB since the ATA and, um, and NWTF. So I appreciate, uh, you guys helped me out during Turkey season. So if you guys are interested in any Turkey calls, any predator calls, any bow fishing lights, I want you guys to check out foxpro.com or I will post a link in the description to their Amazon page where you can pick up this entire light setup. Um, no affiliate link, just, uh, just pure promotion for someone who's actually helping me as a sportsman. So I appreciate y'all for myself, Dustin Apple, hashtag White River Rambo, the White River Rambo custom shop and Miss Amy. I appreciate each and every one of you following along. Don't forget to wear the personal flotation devices, tree stand harnesses, or you're out there chasing God's critters and we'll, we'll see y'all on the next one.